All right, time for new filament, Fila Cube. It's not really new. We've done a lot of Fila Cubes. It's just a new color, green. We'll look at that in a second. So this is what I've been using recently is this orange. Nice. It's called Longhorn Orange. It's the same as the Texas Longhorns color. Anyway, this is a nice color. This is a great filament made in the USA. That's always a plus, proudly made in the USA. And uh, prints super, super, super smooth. So I'm not expecting any problems with this, but we're gonna go ahead and test it anyway like we always do. And do a fun print, just for fun. So this is a nice Kelly Green, which is what I was looking for for my project. It's got a nice vacuum on it and a, a um, desiccant packet. So let's go and open this up. I think I have a new, uh, a new reel design. That's interesting. So the old reel, this is the old reel. This is the new one. So when we measure, it's a little bit narrower too. Huh? So when we measure how much we're getting off of this, it, it's, it's going to be similar, but this reel may weigh a little bit less because it's uh, narrower. But in any case, we'll go ahead and measure it and see how much we got anyway. So let's go ahead and open this up. That's a nice sound, nice good vacuum. Cut off this plastic. So I'm looking for a new PLA filament. My first choice is always Fila Cube. They, they don't make any of the silk filaments, the the you know the shiny silk stuff I use for a lot of my Star Wars stuff. But um, in this case, I was looking for this Kelly Green, and this is a really nice color. I think it's going to come out great. Let's go ahead and weigh this out. So we'll just weigh it raw with the reel, and then we'll put we'll, we'll uh, adjust for the reel here in a second. So we're getting uh, 1104. So let's um, let's go ahead and uh, tear this for the. This is the only reel we have for Fila Cube. So let's let's compare the reels first. So this one's a little bit narrower. Let's see if it fits inside of it. So there's a little bit less material in the center, which is where the heavy part is, and um, it's just the same diameter. In any case, we'll go ahead and use this as our tearing point. 183. So this is probably too heavy. And um, yeah, it's only showing 920. So my guess is this is probably, this reel is probably about 120 grams. So uh, we're, getting, we're very close to uh, one kilogram. In any case, let's go ahead and do our standard test, temperature test, temperature tower test. Um, Uh, bed adhesion and layer uh, cracking test and then we'll do a fun test then we'll put it in production I got already have a project for this I'm gonna be printing it up today one thing I noticed that's uh, new for this reel this is a new reel for Fila Cube is they have these uh, gram indicators so with all of our testing we're not quite down to 230 grams also tells you how many meters you have left so I don't know how accurate these are, but uh, again, our usual strategy is to use up one of these reels and just keep it and use this as a tear setting for the uh, scale. But it gives you a general idea about where you are and how much filament you've used up. So that's handy. All right, so we always start out with a temperature tower. That's the standard way to test filament. And this is one we've used for PLA. Uh, Last year or so, I've been putting all my PLA at 225, so I want to make sure I include that temperature. And then um, the temperature is just to see if maybe it prints better at a different uh, value, but definitely don't want to go over 230. So, so the way this uh, Open SCAD project works is you put in your starting and ending temperature, and it automatically uh, make these little layers here, these little segments that have bridging and a pointy temperature, pointy thing to see how well you uh, can make fine details. It also has indented lettering here for the different temperatures. Also, I, I added this little uh, label here so you can put PLA or if you're doing uh, PETG, you can put PETD, PET in there or ABS, whatever you want. So that's where you set this right here. Alright, so we, we render this into an STL file. 
and then we'll import it into Simplify 3D and we'll set up the temperature gradient to print each of these segments at the right temperature. All right, so here we've imported our STL file. Uh, and then uh, we want to set up the temperature gradients for each of these layers. So we bring up the process and we go over to temperature. So the bed temperature, we've been printing all our PLA at 40 degree bed temperature. That seems to work really well. Enough adhesion, but not too much. And then the uh, temperature that we want to vary over this whole uh, tower here. So we start out at 230. That's our base temperature. And we end up at uh, 210 at the top. So these different layers correspond to these different segments here. So we can go up to the top, and as we go up, we change the temperature. So you can just put these in to uh, do that. And then for cooling, uh, that's interesting. Usually I have this at 100%, so I think I'm going to fix that. Yes, yeah, so usually this is 100% after the first layer for PLA. So. All right, so we'll export this to a SIM card, and then we'll pl plug it into the... Uh, printer and pr fit this up and see how it turns out. printer, the Z drive is very loose, so I gotta put this piece of wood under here. Kind of annoying, put this piece of wood under the base when I take stuff off, because otherwise it just keeps going down and down. So I have a new printer coming, Guider 2, I'm hoping it's an upgrade for this. We'll see. In the meantime, we can keep making stuff with this printer, so I'm not going to stop. As long as I can get it to work one way or the other. I'll just put a new surface on this, so it's a little bit sticky, let's say. I'll have to get that off later. Anyway, let's see how our print turned out. So the bed adhesion is a little bit, it's a brand new surface, so that's one reason. He's just fine. And let's see how we did on the temperature. So we like to print everything at LPLA at 225. And that looks fine. The little pointy thing looks good. It looks like it prints at a wide range here, so there's not a lot of drooping. Anyway, so 225 will be fine. We printed all the other Fila Q uh, filaments at that temperature, so that should be good. And the 40 degree bed temperature also worked out, so. All right, let's go on to the bed and layer adhesion test to make sure we got our cooling dialed in, and then we'll do our fun print. Okay, so we finished the temperature tower test. Now we're gonna do a, a, what I call a bed adhesion and a layer cracking. So this test tests how well your filament is adhering to the bed. So that's what this flat area down here is. And then the layer adhesion is very important. So as these layers, these thin, uh, this thin uh, column here is printed, if you don't have good layer adhesion, then uh, this joint here will crack. So, And then also you can see how your cooling is working as far as doing fine details like this lettering. So there's a raised lettering down here, and there's indented lettering or engraved lettering on this side. So uh, the, all my... Uh, SCAD projects are uh, available on uh, Thingiverse, so I have links to these in the uh, uh, video description. So, so this is the same for every uh, filament we print. We always do this test. This is, I think, the most important test after you figure out what temperature to do. All right, so we'll import this into OpenSCAD, and we will. I'll show you how we how we configure the G code file to send to the printer. Okay. string at 
the end here, which is typical. Get rid of this before it gets too big. And let's see how we did there. Let me make some wood. It's really high tech here, this piece of wood. Yeah, with this brand new surface, PLA sticks pretty well, so I'll have to work harder to get that uh, wipe move off of there. Let's see if we can get this up. Okay. So the bed adhesion is good. It's, again, it's just it's brand new. It's a little bit tight, but over time it'll come just right. And look at the bottom. It's really clean. A little bit of whiteness there from the brand new surface, but... You can span sand this a little bit with some uh, wet and dry sandpaper and be fine. Let's check our joint strength. That's what this is all about. Really. So good, really good joint strength. All right, so we got our parameters dialed in. Oh, let's check the lettering again. So this side is shiny. The surface is shiny, and the indented letters or engraved letters look nice and clean. And the raised letters, and also this surface is shiny. So that means the cooling is working well, it's not blobbing. It's not laying down blobs or leaving holes, whatever, and the uh, raised letter looks good too, so. All right, this is our, this is my favorite test because I made it up myself. And uh, it really tells you whether you have your uh, parameters dialed in or not with a test that takes less than an hour, so. Don't really need to, because I, printing things that are a lot similar to each other, they're not super exotic. So I don't really need to do like an all-in-one test. You know, that's, just takes a lot of time, doesn't really, doesn't really tell you that much uh, once you know what you're making. All right, so let's go ahead and do our fun print and uh, we'll see how that turns out. printed this test print. I forgot where I ran across it, but it's, it's pretty fun. I like the outer space. So. It's coming off a little easier now. All right, so that's coming off better. This area is getting uh, smoothed out slightly. It's not quite as tacky. Let's see how this came up. It comes off really cleanly. Bottom looks clean, nice adhesion. And the detail, there was, was a little string on the top of his head, but I didn't expect that. Um, details on the moon, the little craters look nice, and the astronaut... Oops. Back here, he's flying away. Astronaut looks good, there's um, a little gap here. Can't really see it too much. There's a teeny gap between this air hose and the backpack. Um, I'd say it's a really excellent print. Look at look at these uh, look at the details. All right, so we're ready to put this into production. We're going to be making uh, credits with these Star Wars credits. And uh, meanwhile, this guy's going to fly. He needs to go home. He's been on the moon too long. So once again, Fila Cube, thumbs up for Fila Cube. Any of their filaments are, any of their PLA filament colors are great. I want to show one more thing now that I got it uh, set up. So, originally I had all this stuff here to prevent the filament, the wheel from being pulled this way. But now with this new setup, where this is pointing out, poking out to 50%, halfway across this reel, now the filament feeds super smoothly by being pushed up against this side. So there's no problems with the friction, because it, with the old setup where I was going in, I had the, the reel more closer to the machine because of the way it would be pulled by the little short segment here. Uh, when I got to the end of the reel, there was a lot of friction because I had to go up all, I had to, the filament had to rub up against this side of the reel and then go into a kind of a sharp turn to go into the, into the printer. So now, with this sticking out this far, 
uh, the filament's always coming off in the middle of the reel, going out straight this way, and then making a nice smooth turn to go into the machine. So, so uh, if you have a side loader like this, I recommend having a tube sticking out so that your filament uh, feeds from the middle, at least the middle of the reel. That's about how far this goes out, and then this arc here. So this this will feed very smoothly all the way to the end of the reel without any friction problems. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.